back to the channel. It seems like it's been a minute since I actually worked on the motor. Um, here's just a little update on what's going on. So the last time we stopped off, we finished off at pa painting the motor. Motors. And the motor's still taped off. I haven't actually gotten a chance to remove the tape. But what we're gonna, what I'm planning on doing today is to show you how to file the rings on the piston. So we're actually getting ready to finally start building the motor. All right guys, <clears throat> today I'm gonna show you how to file your piston rings. So my pistons are from CP and we have CP rings. So what you're supposed to do is take the diameter of the bore and since this is a Japanese motor, the diameter is in millimeters for us. For this motor, we're using a standard bore, which is 87 millimeters, and you want to divide that by 25.4 to get the amount in inches, so 3.425 inches. And here are the measurements for the gap, the gapping measurements. For street high performance you want to so you want to take your bore in inches times the gap and then you would have the amount of ring gap so this would be tens hundreds thousands this would be sixteenth sixteen thousands and the way you would double check the way you would double check if it's 16 thousandths is with this feeler gauge and feeler gauge has see, measured this is 15 thou 16 thousand so this this gap itself is 16 thousand so after doing some research and referring to this chart and the guidelines that CP Piston has online, I've decided to go with a 0.005, which is from 0.005 to 0.0055. So it's in between the drag and nitrous turbo setup. So these numbers I put, pulled from the CP website. Basically, this is for uh, sports compact making less than 750 I'm not gonna try to push over 750 on stock sleeves so the gap that I'm gonna be running for the top ring would be 18 thousandths and for the second ring would be 21 thousandths okay so we're gonna use these eventually to measure up the gaps what you want to do is first grab your set of your ring pack and we'll bring these rings I'll bring the whole ring pack over so you have a few different types of rings this when you look at the ring and you see the lettering over here that means this is facing upwards the second ring is usually a thicker ring and for CP actually um, they have the second ring tapered, so the second ring is able to scrape the oil off the walls. This is the oil control ring. I'm not sure if you can, you guys can see, but these two edges are supposed to butt up like that, and when they're installed in the piston, so they don't want to, you don't want them to be overlapped like that. They should be like that. And these are the oil rings. They just go. They go into the same groove that the oil control ring goes into. One sits on top and one sits on bottom. So we're basically not gonna touch these for now. We're just gonna work with these two. So I'm gonna start with the top ring first. And what you wanna do 
is you want to insert the ring back side first and after you have the ring in there you actually want to square the ring up all right so the way you want to square up your piston you want to take an old piston just put it in this is stock 87 millimeter piston rotate it around and there you go your piston has been squared and we're going for 18 thou <clears throat> So we're gonna take our fueler gauges and you see that small gap that we have there? Let's see if we have 15 thou looks way too big. Try 10 thou. 10 thousand goes right in. 11 thou. That's 14 thou. Let's go back to 13 thou. So this ring is currently gapped at 13 thousandths. So what I want to do now is take this ring out. You want to when you file the ring, you want to only, you want to make sure you're only filing one side. And you want to go inwards. You want to file the burr inwards. So I'm going to round the ring, put the ring against these two points. Okay, so we're at 13,000. I'm gonna try it again. This is basically a trial and error process. I put the ring in multiple times, I measured it multiple times, and I ended up filing it multiple times as well. I'm just gonna skip to the part where the ring cap was correct. A few moments later. All right, guys. So I've gapped the ring. See, this is 18 thousandths. So the 18 thousandths feeler gauge can go right in. And you can, you can feel that there's a little bit of drag to it. And now we're going to try the 19 thousandths. The 19 thousandths doesn't go in. Doesn't go all the way in. So we're going to leave this top ring at 18 thousandths. Also, you want to take the ring out from the rear. Label this ring pack one for the first cylinder. And then we're gonna work on the second ring. Remember, the rings have a marking on them to tell you which side's up. I'm gonna put the ring in. So that's basically the process on how to gap your piston rings. 
you just want to follow the same steps for the remaining rings, the remaining first ring and second ring. All right, guys. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. Um, that's just a quick tutorial on how to gap your piston rings. You want to make sure you take your time with them. Uh, make sure the gap is correct. And if you like what you see, stay tuned. We're really gonna be rebuilding this whole engine. Hopefully it actually works. If you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks guys, peace.